What's up everybody, Applesauce is back with some more Pokemon Fire Red, and uh, in the last episode we actually didn't see what this guy had to say, so let's see it. Uh, okay, that's really awkward. So apparently not only is Brock rock hard, but he teaches all of his uh, underlings that he's rock hard too. Oh, rock hard willpower. Rock hard. Yeah, Brock, this is a really awkward gym. I kind of don't want to be here anymore, but okay. Anyway, like he said, his Pokemon are all of the rock type, so that brings us to our question of the day, which is, what is your favorite rock type Pokemon? Mine is obviously Tyranitar, because Tyranitar is a boss like that. So anyway, Brock, of course, starts off with Geodude, like he always does, and I'm going to go for Metal Claw and Charmeleon because I can, and because super effective, and because it does half damage, awesome. But I don't get an attack boost, unfortunately, but you know, that's you don't need attack boost, and of course he gets a critical hit, because Brock's just really lucky like that, I guess. So anyway, um, that was pretty... So Ooh, now I get an attack boost, so I'm gonna keep Charmeleon in, I actually... Well, actually, I was probably planning on doing that anyway, I don't really know what I was gonna do. It was sort of across that bridge when we come to it kind of thing, you know? So anyway, uh, next up is his Onyx! And I'm gonna see how much Metal Claw does. Oh, that did a good amount of damage, awesome. And yes, he messed with Rock Tomb! That's really key. I'm glad that happened. So, um, let's see how much Ember does. Awesome. If he doesn't heal now, then Metal Claw will take him out. And, oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, I can survive another one of those. Oh my god, this is awesome. And my speed fell, but that's okay, because like I said, I can survive another one. Unless he gets a critical hit. If he gets a critical hit, I'm gonna be mad. And why would you use Tackle? That was so dumb. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, there goes Onyx, which means that there goes Brock. That's right, this gym challenge is over, and it was actually very easy. A lot easier than I thought, and Charmeleon grows level 17 because Charmeleon is a boss like that. And yeah, look at all that awesome statness. I don't know. I took you for granted, and so I lost. And he gives us the Boulder Badge. Da -da 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 Yay, sidebar change. If you were kind of paying attention to sidebar, it just changed to show that I have the boulder badge now, so... Yeah, that's awesome. Wait, take this with you. And he gives us TM39 Rock Tomb. And, uh, yeah, uh, TM was only good for one use. You haven't been to Unova, have you? Yeah, and back in this generation, and in fourth generation, TMs could only be used once, and then they broke for some reason. Probably it's because you slapped it on the Pokemon's head so hard. No, but seriously, you don't actually slap. Wait, hold on. I'm gonna go talk to Brock one more time. I think he might say something different. I don't. I'm not sure exactly. But hey, fame check our entry. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, it's not a fame check our entry, but still, it's text, so we're gonna read. All right. So um. Anyway, I was saying something a few seconds ago, but whatever it wasn't really important. So anyway, we are going to leave Pewter City now that we've beat Brock, because Brock is really the only point of interest in this town, and I'm not talking about his rock hardness, I'm just talking about that the fact that he's a gym leader, and we do have one badge now, and I can prove it to you because it says so on my trainer card. And I'm not really sure how that works, do you like, just like, glue it to the trainer card, or is there like, Velcro on the back, and if so, then that's kind of a ghetto badge, it's supposed to be like, all shiny and, like, silver and stuff, but there's Velcro on the back that makes it stick to the trainer card. Yeah. I don't know. But anyway, like I said, that's it for this, uh, this town. I'm so glad we're done with this place, because it's mostly about rock-type Pokemon, and I only have a fire-type, so that's not good. And more lag! There we go. Okay, and this guy shows up out of nowhere. It's one of Professor Oak's aides. Yeah, don't get too close to me, buddy. And he gives me the running shoes. Alright. He gave me the running shoes. You can get as close as you want because the running shoes are flipping awesome. Yeah, you're gonna go back to the lab where you will remain forever, unless you're the same guy that gives me like the experience share and some other stuff. So anyway, um, now we have running shoes. Look at that, bang! Oh, what? I'm gonna read that just because I can. Because now I have running shoes. I'm reading it with running shoes now. Before I didn't read it with running shoes. I just read it out. So, anyway, we are gonna battle some trainers because I can. You... Did she really just say that? Excuse me, you looked at me, didn't you? Oh my gosh, what's up with the lasses in this game? Seriously. And you know, one thing that doesn't make sense is, because, is that you can be a female character on this game. So it's pretty much saying... 
I mean, first of all, not there's anything wrong with lesbians. I mean, <laughs> we all are. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. But, but seriously, it's like, it's like, I thought, uh, is Nintendo saying that, uh, lesbianism is appropriate for these games? Because, you know, I mean, I think it, it could be. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. If, if that's cool, that's cool. But, I mean, it seems like they've gone so far to, you know, not put that kind of stuff in here. And then all of a sudden they have lasses that say things like, you touched me, didn't you, when you're a girl. And, um, like in Rock Tunnel, don't try anything funny in the dark. You can be a girl in this game. I don't know if they realized that when making the text, but... Whatever. You know, I think they might have just taken the text from Red Version or Blue Version and just put it, and just copy-pasted it. Because seriously, there's a trainer in, um, Sabrina's Gym that says, uh... Uh, Psychic Type are only weak to, uh, Ghost and Bug. And I'm just like... Uh, hello, there's a dark type now, in case you didn't know that. But, of course, dark types weren't really allowed, because none of the original 150 Pokemon were dark types. And, uh, that also brings me to another topic, that, um, Magnemite actually got changed to a Steel Electric. Believe it or not, it used to just be an Electric type, because the Steel type had not been invented until second generation. It came out with both Silver, as did the Dark type. Unfortunately, they didn't make anything, uh a dual dark type, like they did the Magnemite, which, um, would've been cool if they did, but they didn't, so, meh. Beat you again? Wait, I battled you in Viridian Forest? He said that he saw me, but that doesn't mean he... Did you really battle me? Um, and the answer to that is no. If you, uh, check the names, I've done it before. Uh, but get your... I don't know who this guy is, I can't remember his name, but I remember before that I definitely did not battle. So, I'm just like, what's going on here, buddy? Anyway, Youngster Ben has a Rattata. Rattata. I say Rattata. I think it's Rattata. And the Charmeleon's already almost on level 18. Yeah, overleveled for the win. And oh my gosh, did you just not... Did you just fail to kill a Rattata? Yeah, I was bragging on you, but never mind. You suck, Charmeleon. Oh, of course, I'm kidding. Charmeleon's a baller. And let's see. Yay, level 18. Hey, that gave a lot of experience. I thought... I didn't know Rattata would actually get that much, but hey, I'm not complaining. Next up is Ekans, which is Snake Backwards. And it's just like Arbok is Cobra Backwards. But what is Muck Backwards, you might ask? Well, we're not going to answer that now, because this is a children's game. Yeah, seriously, I'm wondering if they really Im intended to do that, kind of like an inside joke to the older people that were playing this game, because of course the younger kids wouldn't get anything like that, but... I don't know, it, uh, it seems like I'm, it, it doesn't seem like something they would do after they go so hard to, you know, censor the game, but, uh, I don't know, it just seems like too much of a coincidence. Anyway. This guy, I didn't really talk about him, but he's the guy that says, I like shorts, they're delightfully comfy and easy to wear. Yeah, he's like the most famous person in this whole freaking game. Seriously. Everybody knows that guy, and everybody knows the Light Years guy, too. And then there's also somebody who's like right south of me who I'm gonna battle next, probably, who has a level 14 Spiro and says, Hey, you're not wearing shorts. What's wrong with you? And then after you beat him, he says, I wear shorts all the time, even in winter. Yeah, I remember a lot of the text from this game. Am I a nerd? Yes. Am I proud of it? Yes. So anyway, that's more Weedle ownage for you. And you know what I would really like? I know this would never happen because if they were gonna make a remake, it would be of a Ruby Sapphire Emerald game, which, by the way, I think is, you know, it's possible, but, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't. I mean, I really, 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 really hope they make a um, Ruby Sapphire Emerald re or not Ruby Sapphire Emerald, just Ruby and Sapphire remake, because that would be awesome sauce, but, you know, I'm not expecting to, because uh, maybe they make one for the 3DS, but not the DS, because uh, Pokemon Emerald and or Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire and Pokemon Black are still compatible, just through, you know, Diamond and Pearl, Platinum, Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver. You have to go to there first. But back when they made remakes for uh, Fire for Red and uh, Gold versions and, you know, Blue and Silver, of course, <coughs> it was because you couldn't access those games. Like, Pokemon Red and Pokemon Silver and, you know, those games were not compatible with Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. So that's why they had to make some new games. So that's why all that happened. But anyway, I was talking about something about remakes. I'm not even sure. I went on and off on a tangent, and I kind of... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What would really be cool is if they uh, made a... Yeah, hey, you're not wearing shorts. What's wrong with you? Yeah, that's that's a really funny text. It's, uh, it's, it's cool, I guess. So, anyway, I would really love it if they made a Fire Red and Leaf Green remake for the DS. 
because it seems like they're actually good at making remakes now. Well, not well. Maybe they would just make it a red and blue remake, not a fire red and leaf remake. But yeah, it seems like they're actually getting good at making remakes, so they could make a decent one instead of like those really, really crappy ones that like these really are. I mean, they're not crappy games, but as far as remakes go, remakes are supposed to cover the flaws of the old game, which this one did. One thing that I didn't talk about in the uh, last episode when I was talking about all the uh, problems and stuff was the fact that, uh, like, the, um, hold on, wait, yeah, always wear shorts, even in winter, I forgot the back of my policy part, but yeah, um, but there's like a huge level jump in this game, like, their bosses, that, and the boss and the people you're fighting are like in the level 40s and stuff, and then all of a sudden the next person you battle is like level 50 and 60, it's crazy, it's like when you get to the Pokemon League, like right after you beat the 7th gym, you know, not counting the uh, island side quest, there are billions of high-level Pokemon for you to fight. Well, not billions, but, like, seriously, all the bosses, their Pokemon just, like, increase tenfold, and you're just stuck, like, in the in the dust of their Pokemon, which kind of sucks, but I think I'm going to kind of remedy that by using uh, Pokemon that you get already on level 50, so that's going to be cool, because I'm only going to have to train uh, four Pokemon up to level 50, which will be, of course, Charizard, Gengar, Alakazam, and Lapras. So, that's cool. Anyway, be nice. Alright, alright, alright. And she's the one that says, That look you gave me, it's so intriguing. Yeah, I don't know if that's supposed to be sex sexual or not, but if so, it's, uh, it's kind of awkward if you're a girl once again. Once again, though, nothing's wrong with lesbians. Lesbians are great. <laughs> alright, anyway, um, Buttcatcher James here has a caterpie. He's a bug catcher. What else did you expect? Maybe a weedle or something, but yeah, for the most part, Caterpie. And, um, people call Caterpie like the worm Pokemon, I think, but it doesn't really make sense because I thought, I always thought the Caterpie was like a caterpillar and then Weedle was a worm. I don't know, it just, it makes sense because W Weedle and then C Caterpie and then C Caterpillar and W Worm. I mean, I know that. Uh, Caterpie is a Caterpillar, that's obvious, because Caterpie, but Weedle's a little more obscure, nobody really knows if it's a worm or a, or a Caterpie, I mean Caterpillar, no, Weedle's not a Caterpie, that wouldn't make sense. And this is the Jigglypuff trainer, I know her, and then she says, Eek, did you touch me? Yeah, more weird references, seriously, almost every last in the game says that, almost, not all, almost. So here is Jigglypuff, and of course, Ember to the face. And yay, half, and disabled my Ember, you jerk. Alright, let's see how much Metal Claw does compared to Ember. And I hope she doesn't use Sing. I hope to God she doesn't use Sing. And oh my gosh, Metal Claw actually took it out. Mm, that's actually pretty awesome sauce. So, last Robin is defeated. That's it? What, first you don't want me touching you, and now you can't have enough, huh? Uh, okay, obviously. Thank you for that, but anyway. Uh, we're almost done with Root. Four here. We're just gonna talk to this guy. The tunnel from Cerulean. Yeah, well, it's supposed to be. Wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. You can't get here from Cerulean because of the point of no return. So that's weird. Yeah, I don't know if that's a fame checker entry or not, but it's quite possible. And there's also a uh, guy in Mount Moon that has a fame checker entry for Brock too. So that's cool. That's all uh, cool. It's all good in the neighborhood. And, uh, okay, here we are. Let's talk to this fool. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, you know what I really think she should do? Okay, well, you know, there's not enough time in this episode to talk about it, but I do want to say that I got this idea from Slowflake. If you didn't know, Slowflake is my favorite LP here, by the way. But anyway, I got this idea from Slowflake, and I'll tell it to you in the next episode. There's not enough time in this one. And, oh, it's the Magikarp guy. Yeah, I'll let you in on a secret Magikarp. And this is, of course, what the guy was talking about in Pewter City, the guy in the Mart. Yeah, this is the guy that sells Magikarp and makes people think that it's such a great deal. But seriously, $500 for a Magikarp? I'd rather go in the museum. Because Magikarp is worthless. So, anyways, thank you for watching. And that's it. In the next episode, we will be heading over... Well, not heading over to Mount Moon. We will be heading into Mount Moon. Into Mount Moon. Because I can. So, thank you for watching, and goodbye. This is Apple Pals, signing out.